what, how this particular story begins is with a particular set of situations based in Mexico City and a concern with uh, the management of burial death, burial space, and land development. Several situations arise. The first situation, the most obvious one, is that burial capacity in Mexico City will reach uh, its maximum level in 10 years. Another pending issue is the issue of land development. Mexico City is landlocked between mountains, lakes, density, and a growing population, a migrant population from, from the general population of Mexico because Mexico City is the economic capital. There's been several initiatives and concerns by the legislation of Mexico um, government, local government, and federal government for the renovation and repurposing of these cemeteries. Uh, a lot of these cemeteries are monuments uh, to Mexico, Mexico City. Cemeteries like Pantera Dolores is where uh, Miguel Hidalgo, uh, Benito Juarez, and people like uh, um, uh, there's, there's a lot of people who are famous and very good. To strengthen the, uh, the aspect the cultural aspect of, of, of museums in Mexico City, uh, the city has looking, been looking for ideas uh, basically for this issue. Today is 2014, there's 21 million inhabitants here. By 2050, there will be 27 million. Making city, making Mexico City a mega city. By 2050, one fourth of the population will be of terminal age. This means that one fourth of the population will be between 85 and 95 years of age, and they will be needing a place to rest forever. Burial capacity in Mexico City, as I mentioned, is reaching full capacity. There's 107 uh, cemeteries, however, most of them are uh, not maintained, and they become uh, brownfield, brownfield sites, uh, wooded. Uh, the land is undevelopable as it is, and there's no open land for redevelopment. There's no, there's not a high uh, horizontality that cemeteries need. There's also uh, a really strong so, uh, legislative process that Mexico City has gone through is they just totally banned out uh, perpetuity in cemeteries. You cannot find a place or buy a place to rest forever in a public cemetery. You can only lease a space for seven years. And through this article and several studies have found that only one third of families come back after seven years. Uh, a lot of authors and artists have joked about this and written things about, you know, uh, we forget about the dead in seven years or who cares about the dead in seven years, things of that sort. Uh, Mexicans like to flirt with that in jokes. This is a uh, Pantera de in Mexico City, Miguel Muertes. Miguel Muertos. Uh, it's an image and representation of how intimate <coughs> Mexico, Mexico's population and culture is with, uh, with the ritual of death. Uh, it comes from pre colonial traditions from the Aztecs and Mayans. Um, the idea that the dead still live within us, within our cities. This is a map of Mexico City. You can see. Uh, Sierra Madre, flanking it. Uh, there's no available land, virtually no available land, uh, except for reserves and parks and cemeteries. All these are available assets for ecology and environmental purposes. Because of this, Mexico City is concerned, and also the academics, uh, Universidad de Anahuac, put out a competition about two years ago to create ideas of how would you resolve this. Uh, the basic program was for a vertical cemetery, uh, above ground or underground. Um, the idea was that the cemetery would be based on Bosque de Chapultepec, which is that giant uh, urban park in the middle. Uh, that giant park in the middle has seven museums, some of the most important museums in anthropology, Museo del Niño, uh, Museo de Modern Art, uh, several others. Uh, it's a cultural center in Mexico. Uh, right next to it and within it is uh, encapsulated Pantera Dolores, which is the largest uh, public cemetery in <coughs> America and the oldest. The program, as you see, is basically uh, creating some niches, which I think it's a, a modest, uh, pretty modest uh, 
program to say sort of like the, the solution that it's trying to accomplish, which is density. Uh, vertical cemeteries are not a new thing. Vertical cemeteries uh, are an idea that go far beyond what I can, you know, uh, we can call in history. Uh, there's always been issues between vertical and horizontal and acropolis. One of the oldest, uh, still remaining, uh, vertical cemeteries is Memorial Necropole Ecumenica in Brazil. It was developed by a developer, Jose Aston, who's also a commercial developer, hotel developer, and also has a TV station. Uh, he wanted to solve this problem by building and sort of conglomerating uh, the concept of a hotel and cemetery. He figured out, uh, he had all his friends started dying. He started visiting all these people everywhere and needed a hotel to stay. Uh, he's a pretty busy guy, so he brought up the concept of just open cemetery with some streets on it where you can stay. Uh, he opened it in 1983. It was highly successful. He says that for him, a vertical cemetery is more successful than a hotel. Uh, this hotel has 30,000 thumbs. Ceremony, uh, you can do ceremony on your web, ceremony on Facebook, ceremony on your cell phone, all kinds of things. So he sort of con contributed to the idea of bringing in technology and the idea that death and the ritual can expand physical the physical realm. So what's the premise? How do we how do we deal with all these dead corpses uh, yes. in 2015? How do we you know pragmatically think about the idea that these are bodies, uh, they're bodymetric uh, the beings that have to be of course memorialized but First of all, disposed in a sustainable, uh, ecological way, which our current cemeteries, cemetery practices have not been doing. Uh, for the same fact that the body is full of toxins uh, from the moment, moment of birth. The proposal for this project is that by using or extending the horizontal, the, the singularity of our horizontal path. Uh, vertically, then you derive the idea of a spiral. Uh, a spiral is a continuation of the ground uh, to a point of singularity at its end. This spiral will project 10,000 feet in spiral night at night, and it will be uh, a tube projecting into the sky. The idea is that this tube feeds to the religious and and facilities uh, infrastructure of current cemeteries so that you don't have to build as the other program competition uh, bathrooms, new uh, temples, new uh, you know, lobbies and everything. So these, this tower basically plugs into a current cemetery and uses those facilities in also a sustainable way. This Pantel Dolores, as I mentioned, is right next to within Bosco de Chapultepec. It's 70, 700 acres. It has 500,000 tombs, and this gives us 700 tombs per acre. The little square there underneath on the south is the site. Uh, the site is only one acre. Uh, how many people can you fit in here? The strategy then becomes, you project this solar tube into the sky. The solar tube contains a continuation of soil, as nutrients and as a continuation of ecology in the same way that horizontal uh, projection we create. The, sp the spiral also projects a vessel to Gidari, uh, which resembles uh, a journey to the cemetery, a particular journey. I mean, death is something very personal. Death is something that everybody has their own particular beyond physical uh, path that one chooses. When one goes to see a loved one, it's more than just a straight path. Uh, everybody has their own way. It's a singular event, a singular experience. The spiral is structurally uh, a space frame. The spiral grows organically with the demand for burial as it arises. So the spiral can grow from one story to two stories, to three stories, to five stories, to six stories. And the ease of uh, fabrication would be uh, you know, prefab, uh, crane operated, and then it would be skinned and oxidized copper. This material is a material that ages uh, honestly, uh, a material that shows temporality through the aging process. And this skin also has a porosity that reacts in proximity to the cemetery. So the skin 
as it approximates the cemetery, the cystic pantone locus, it starts becoming porous and the, the path and the space becomes disintegrating uh, as you ascend. To put this matter into perspective, the tower, the spiral length of a, of a spiral is 10,000 10, linear feet, and this will accommodate 10,000 tombs. It's only 400 feet high, and the whole length of the cemetery of Lotus is 500 feet. So it's basically the spiral length is <coughs> a trip from one end, from one beginning to the from one cemetery to the end and back. The spiral, as it grows, it carries also uh, it's uh, the soil that becomes this ecological center. Uh, the way that the site is approached, the site is at a, at a, at a uh, topograph topographic, it's basically at a 20 foot difference in level uh, from one inch of the site to the other. So then you take the site, you bring it up into a volumetric, uh, and then bring that volume into the, so it matches the site, uh, the sidewalk. Then you punch a hole in the middle of it, and then that's where the spiral emerges from. That piece in the center is uh, the cistern that would feed this, uh, this spiral, this sort of digestive system. The ground, the ground level program is pretty simple. The program is linear. The program is dictated exactly by the, by the use and its approach. Uh, so each section of the tube is particular to the experience. Uh, there is a processional hallway that is only a processional hallway, hallway. You don't have anything else to do there but walk. There's a elevator lobby that is just precisely just for getting there vertically. And there's also there's also the uh, Bobelas chamber, which is where the cemetery or the burial uh, chambers are, which is exclusive for visiting other people. There's no other programming in the field. The section then, as you can see, this is where the journey from the ground up begins. You get off the elevator, the elevator uses a vacuum tube which is already in existence. Uh, the box is framed, uh, welded in steel, similar to what Richard Serra is doing and what ship uh, manufacturers are doing. Uh, the ecology of the Pantic should be resembling some sort of regional and also uh, Transient planting, which would change in, in its uh, seasonal. So, Flores et Patsuchi, which is the Flores Marco, it's something that's uh, embedded in the culture of desert Mexico. Then the building becomes this tree or this garden of life uh, that becomes the image of Marco. The procession hallway then is, it, it compacts into its use. So, there's only Soil tube, and then there's the processional tube. The skin starts integrating, and when you get to the burial chambers, it opens up because it projects and it's limited by the extensive view to the cemetery across the street. Uh, I based uh, the stacking boilers uh, based on the existing uh, cemetery in Brazil, uh, and also I found the research. Uh, the Infinity Mushroom Project in Austin. Uh, they're researching ways of implementing natural burials so that the body is decomposed faster and that the body is, re is released and all its toxins are translated into uh, nutrients for trees, for grass, for everything. So the idea is that you would be put into one of these suits, uh, you would become a mushroom, and you would feed this tree of life. Then, as I said before, as you're proceeding and ascending into the tower, into the sky, the skin and the space starts disintegrating and melting, emerging with light. From the sea, then this becomes the image of the cemetery, which the tower itself is not shy of. Uh, in a way, it's almost narcissistic. Then, taking this logic to extreme, in this topic view, if we want to release this cemeteries from land development and repurpose them for any other use, for urban use, for living use, for apartment use, then these towers start plugging into existing cemeteries using their infrastructure, 
using their, uh, their religious uh, compositions, chapels, monuments, uh, but they also release and, and make the cemetery uh, memorial for the other people. Uh, you can come in and revitalize the cemetery, you can come in and uh, create a urban park, you can make it for recreation, uh, you can do anything you want. Uh, to achieve the, se the same exact number of burial chambers that uh, Pantheon Dolores has, which is 500,000, you need 40 towers, 40 or 50 towers uh, around Parque Ch Chapultepec. Uh, this is what it would look like. For your time, thank you. Uh, Javier, uh, may I ask you a question? Sure. This is a good time. Had you thought about cremation? Yes. Okay. And usually, public cemeteries have mm -hmm. several options, right? Right. Um, and that would, I mean, that's a way to save space. The other, the other question. <laughs> 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 Yes, uh, it looked it's, like in the images you showed that it, it didn't show any kind of personalization. Right, no, it's uh, it's because of the nature of these of these spiral. Mm -hmm. So if you think of it as a sort of digestive system, where you go in for three years and then you come out and somebody else comes in, uh, it's not, there's no perpetuity in this tower. This tower, okay, but, but isn't there a place for the family? To come right, right. That's uh, well. Uh, no. After you, after you reach your, your temporality, you usually go back and then you cremate and take it into a temple mm -hmm. or throw it up in a, in a uh, mm -hmm. fountain or yeah, something like that. So. Yeah. Here, here, I'm going to just poke a hole. Sure. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, go ahead. <laughs> um, being a Mexican descent, mm -hmm. um, the reason Dia de los Muertos is such a big deal we had one of those images. Yeah. People keep going out, we sit, we can't, we, you know, we do that. How, how do they do that? Because that's, that's embedded in our culture. Right. Right. Where do we go? How do we have our funeral for our loved one? You call, you call that spiral pr procession. How do you get 35, 30 to 35 stories up in the air? Um, how do you have, how do you lay someone to rest? What about the ritual of the, the tradition of, or the Catholic, I'm not to say Catholic, because the devotee is not supposed to be Catholic. We do. Um, and I poke a hole in it because it hit a sensitive spot for me. Yeah. Yeah. My son passed away. Okay. I go visit him every Sunday, sometimes twice a week. How do I do that?
places where the, the bodies are placed uh, vertically, just like you did. And the Romans had exactly the same tradition that you, you're speaking of. People, families would go and share a meal with, with, a, with a family member who uh, died. And the, the way to do that is that if you look at how the catacombs were, very narrow little passages, uh, wealthier people had literally family tombs. Uh, poor people, of course, would have to visit the family in the passageway. Um, but the idea that it's so strong here is that um, if you look at this ancient idea of burial, it's burial. The necropolis is always a city of the dead. So whatever the city is, the city of the dead is a mere image of it, in a way. And so I completely agree with your comment that there has to be a way. What's in, why is it important for people to be buried in a certain way? Part of it is the continuity of tradition. The families always wanting to feel that the dead are with them. You know, uh, in, in the Romans, the ancient pagans did the same thing. They wanted, they wanted to, to live with the dead and make continue that continuity. That's really important. The, the idea, the idea behind that also the uh, tower and becoming this sort of apology was that, uh, and precisely because of that, it's just unexplained, but uh, it's that this tower, this tree of life, the uh, image of uh, the community of Mexico City. So when you're looking at visiting at someone, you were going to go visit a dead corpse or a concrete casket, but you would go visit a tree or a plant or a growing, you know, a green wall or something. So it's also a reflection and it's also a temporal kind of you know, continuity into nature, uh, because also the preservation of, of the body is not natural. Uh, well, isn't there a commemoration in Mexican culture of uh, birth and life? Uh, and you say the act of birth and the uh, umbilical cord is buried under a tree? Yeah. So um, there is a tradition of the beginning of life that's commemorated in a certain way, uh, and uh, it becomes also a way of return. You know, what I'm worried about, the thing that keeps me up at night is thinking about how many of us there are and how much of a problem we are for ourselves. Uh, there are more people alive now than there have been in the entirety of our species history. And we haven't even begun to see that in fact on the multiplication is going to carry us to until the end of the century. I think uh, there may be some reason for us to be thinking about the future is going to hold the only measures for managing the human population. It's uh, remains. Uh, I, uh, I I think that this is um, breathtaking uh, that, that you delve into this and look at it at the scale that it represents because it is a scale that we're facing. Uh, we've seen some projects uh, done by the students from China and also in China today. I am we might do some work there. Um, I'm just staggered by the thought of what the future is carrying us to at any celebration. How in the world are we going to manage a city of 30 or 40 million people? How are we going to bury everybody? Where are we going to put them? Even if you uh, incinerate it all, and if you turn everybody into ashes, that's still a staggering thing to think about the amount of effort that will require. And also uh, making it a human process. Uh, that's, what, that's why we go to the trouble, is that we want to connect. Thank <laughs> you.
decomposed in, which is, do you know, seven years? Uh, it's six months. Oh, six months. Six months. So six months. But I want to call somebody and be like, hey, come back for your <laughs> right. <laughs> 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 That's not the second three years. Right. So there's got to be some sort of little uh, Zamboni or something that goes up there, <laughs> and unplugs the stuff, takes yeah. the dirt out, and puts the new person in, right? So that's a kind of complicated logistical thing to do, uh, I think. Right? Or, yes. you know, because, I mean, I guess you're taking the, you're taking the people out in the low parts. I mean, you know, I just, I guess it's constantly. Right, there's still logic that needs right. to be stored. Yeah, no, it's very interesting. It's, it's interesting. How did this, you know, the spiral shape's interesting, but that's just not any spiral. How did you generate that? Uh, the, uh, the spiral is really, the, the shape is driven by uh, the similarity of each section. So uh, I took the sort of like randomness or the difference in path that each one would take different to its own graveyard. So if you go visit your uncle to a cemetery and you go visit your mom, to the same cemetery, the path of the journey is absolutely different. Mm -hmm. so there's a singularity about the journey. So they look um, the same. So each exactly spiral, exactly, the same. exactly each spiral is uh, well, it's own grasshopper, it's parametric. So that there's a there's a degree of, of randomness and that through genome forming you could get different a hundred or a thousand different towers with each one exactly a different section. Mm -hmm. uh, no tower is uh, the I same. See. And also the, the forming the shape of the the building is really dictated by its verticality. It's density, but it could be anything. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's. Uh, How do I fit you to see my loved one? You. Say you're on the third day. If you want, if you feel like exercising, <laughs> you can just walk. <laughs> right. If you don't. So yeah. Somewhere there's a line. There's uh, <laughs> the. <laughs> there's also a the shape of uh, a spiral. The spiral is uh, is different, uh, and it's sort of pattern, but it's guided and driven by three. Uh, pivot points. Uh, one is the extensive of the visual extent of the frontal lotus, which is what dictates the chamber angle. And then there's the other pivot is the elevator. So there's a common point through all the, uh, every second floor through the spirals that will take you uh, up and down vertically through the elevator, but you can just walk if you felt energetic. You know, one of the other things you need to think about uh, is how does, how is the burial There's a lot of things that I value for the project. Uh, idealistically, 
but also being a tool for pragmatics and situation and see uh, the issues of the temporality versus perpetuity. And those are things that sort of like drive uh, or started driving the project toward this uh, sort of digestion and uh, memorization through the tower, um, which was, I think, uh, interesting in a way. And the project's force of uh some issues and logical issues that take you know, a longer period of uh, research and extent and construction documents. But the level the project was operating, uh, I think, was using sort of the extreme, probably the extreme logic of uh, can you stretch something out into a uh, uh, the other next diagram, uh, and that's what I... Okay, but it, that's fine, and, and there could be a way to uh, put the names and put people in so What about as a, as a place where the people can visit? Where, is there a certain program that was uh, 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 chapel? Is there a uh, chapel in the program? Uh, there's a, well, it's a question of the temple on the rooftop. Um, that's sort of a point of singularity that uh, spiral converges. So let's see it, and you get to point A, which is the ground. Uh, it's, it's sort of like an ashes lagoon in the center. And then you culminate in the uh, open air chapel, which is very typical in Mayan master culture. Where is it? And that'll be the, the third group open air temple. So that temple basically rises with the tower rises? Right. The spiral. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.